Hi, Keith here with another statistical video. This time I'm going to look at Primer 6 using the Permanover Plus add-in and look at CAP. On my channel I indicated that I needed to do another video um, looking at CAP in a little bit more detail and a little bit more clearly. So CAP is Canonical Analysis of Principal Coordinates and I'll read directly from the manual here. CAP is a routine for performing canonical analysis of principal coordinates. The purpose of CAP is to find axes through the multivariate cloud of points that either are the best at discriminating among a priori groups, which is discriminant analysis, or have the strongest correlation with some other set of variables, canonical correlation. In this video, I'll look at the first of these, and it won't take long to do so, it's going to be a fairly quick video. Later, I'll do another one looking at the second of the uses of CAP. In this case, I'm actually using the data set, or one of the data sets that comes with the Permanova add in. It's the data analyzed by Willis or data collected by Willis and Denny uh, examining temperate reef fish assemblages at the Poor Knights Island, New Zealand. Divers counted abundances of fish belonging to each of 62 species in each of nine 25 meter by 5 meter transects. And so they've done some pooling in the data. You can see the file up here so you've got species of fish across here, samples of course going down the row, values in here are raw abundances, and there's only one factor in here because sites are pooled, so it's just looking at the different sampling at times, of which there are three. And we can scroll across and we can see that there are some species that are fairly abundant and others that are fairly sparse. sparse. Now I've done some preliminary work up here, you can see looking at the top, following uh, the manual I've done the log x plus 1 transform to reduce the importance of the very abundant species and then I've calculated the bray curtis resemblance matrix. So to start with, let's go up to Permanova and do PCO, Principal Coordinates Analysis and just have a look at what we can see here. Okay, we need to tidy this up a little bit. So I'll turn off the sample numbers and plot by time. And what we can see in here is not a lot. Uh, PCO1 is uh, capturing about 21% of the variation. The other axis is about another 12%, so a lot of variation is unexplained here and of significance or of importance there's no clear separation here of the sampling times. So I'm going to rename this one unconstrained oh, well two R's, two I's, two A's Now another way of looking at these data is actually to do a permanover and to test for a significant difference among times. So let's go and create the design. That's going to be looking at time. So only one factor in here. I like to name the various files and results in here so Later on when I look, I can say, okay, that's what I was doing. So, Permanova. Run it. It finds our design worksheet. And I've switched here to unrestricted permutation of raw data. The default is this one, but if I do that, we'll get this message. So, let's go back and just run it with the recommended method. And down here, we find that the 
p-value is 0.002. So we've got a highly significant difference among sampling times here, but there is very little evidence of that in the unconstrained PCO. And the first thing this illustrates is that Permanova can find differences in the data cloud that are not evident in a two-way, two-dimensional automation. Now we can try a cap. And what we're going to do is constrain the analysis to emphasize differences among sampling times. Go. Here we go. And again, just for clarity, I'll turn off the sample numbers. They're not telling us anything much. Now we can see the samples are quite clearly separating out by sampling time. And this is because the analysis is done specifically, or the automation is done specifically, to emphasize differences among the times. This is valid because we've already established via Permanova that such differences do exist. It would not be valid to do this if we hadn't established by some other method, such as Anasim or Permanova, that there were significant differences because the method, the procedure, is designed to emphasize differences in the selected factors or in the, among the selected levels. So we've got to have some reason for going ahead to actually uh, try this. Now, we can get a little bit more information here if we put on vectors for the different species. And to limit, let's put a correlation of 0.4. And so we can start to see that there are groups of species that are separating out uh, and being more abundant at particular times than at others. So there's a sweet few down here that are particularly abundant in March 99 and a few over here particularly abundant in September 98 and so on. Okay, the diagram we're looking at here is a visualization or a graphical representation of the results of the analysis. If we go here, we can see more detail of what's been done. Now, in order to do the analysis, the routine has to decide how many principal coordinates to use. If there's 56 samples, as we have here, potentially there are 55 PCO axes, and these will perfectly describe or perfectly explain the data. And clearly, that's not very desirable. The problem is referred to in the manual as overparameterization. So, what the routine does is goes through and finds the best choice, which is coming out to be seven here, of PCO PCO axes. So if we scroll down to the diagnostics we see here, it's gone up to 15, 7 and 8 are the best choices. They give a high proportion of variance explained, 71 or 76 percent, and importantly a high percentage of correctly classified samples. And the cross-validation and classification of samples is the diagnostic that makes most sense to me. So you can see that for September 98, there were 15 samples using an M of seven, so seven principal coordinates, axes. 11 of those are correctly classified. And you get a similar result for the other two times, about 70 to 75 percent of the samples are correctly classified about 25 percent are. So that's reasonably good and that's explaining about 71 percent of the data. So it's worth just having a look at this 
to see whether the cap is actually correctly classifying samples. Okay, last unconstrained, we can't really see anything that's going on in here. Permanava tells us that there is something going on. In this case, it's a one factor design, so we could also do Anasim, which would give a similar result. And then when we graph or plot the results of the cap, we can clearly see the separation of the different times and start to identify the species which are changing in abundance.